What's up, everyone? Now, for those of you who've been following me for a long time, you know that I've been interested in the Canadian North for a while. But there's another part of the world that really fascinates me. That being the Russian Far East, specifically the peninsula of Kamchatka. So in today's video, let's do a deep dive on the geography of Kamchatka. And I'd like to apologize in advance for any mispronunciations. Let's get started. In a remote corner of Russia, lies a peninsula that's home to over 100 volcanoes. We're an area larger than California remained completely forbidden to outsiders for over 70 years. Welcome to the Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia's most mysterious frontier and one of the most geographically extreme places on our planet. So today we're going to explore why this remote corner of Russia is home to more active volcanoes than anywhere else on Earth and how it became one of the planet's last great wilderness areas. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why Kamchatka might just be the most geographically fascinating place on Earth. So let's dive in. And as always, this is Ali and welcome back to Urban Atlas. The Kamchatka Peninsula is located on the far eastern edge of Russia, stretching nearly 1250 kilometers south into the Pacific Ocean. To put that into perspective, if you placed Kamchatka over the US, it would stretch all the way from New York to Florida. At 270,000 square kilometers, it's larger than the United Kingdom, yet home to fewer than 315,000 people. That's a population density of just over one person per square kilometer. The Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Okhotsk make up the peninsula's eastern and western coastlines. And immediately off the eastern coast lies the Kamchatka Kuril Trench, one of the deepest trenches on Earth, dropping to 9,600 meters deep. Politically, Kamchatka forms most of the Kamchatka Krai, one of Russia's federal subjects. The regional capital, Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, sits on the southeast corner and houses nearly half of the peninsula's entire population. So here's what makes Kamchatka truly special. It's essentially a 1200 kilometer long volcanic laboratory. You see, the peninsula sits on top of one of the most geologically active spots on Earth, but the Pacific Plate slides beneath the North American Plate in a process called subduction. This creates what geologists call the Ring of Fire, and Kamchatka is sitting right on the hottest part. So here are some numbers that will blow your mind. Kamchatka is home to over 160 volcanoes, 29 of which are currently active. That means on any given day, somewhere on this peninsula, the Earth might just be reshaping itself. And this volcanic fury exists because of the peninsula's position over a subduction zone. As the Pacific Plate dives underneath the continental plate, it melts and creates magma that eventually erupts through the surface. The result? A volcanic spine running down the entire length of the peninsula. Kluchevskaya Sopka. It stands as a giant among giants. At 4,754 meters, it's the highest active volcano in Eurasia, and this beast has been erupting almost continuously for the past 6,000 years. And locals say that you can see its glow from over 100 kilometers away on a clear night. Then there's the famous Valley of Geysers, discovered only in 1941. This 7 kilometer canyon contains over 90 geysers and countless hot springs, creating a landscape so alien that it looks like something from another planet. Steam rises from the ground year-round. The largest geyser, Velikin, shoots water 40 meters into the air. But perhaps most impressive is the Uzon Caldera, a massive volcanic crater 9 by 12 kilometers wide. Inside this ancient caldera, the Earth's crust is so thin that you can literally see the planet's internal processes at work. Hot springs bubble with temperatures reaching 95 degrees Celsius, and the ground is painted in impossible colors from the mineral deposits. And this isn't just ancient history. Kamchatka's volcanoes regularly shape the landscape. In 1975, the Tobachik eruption created entirely new landforms, while the 1996 eruption of Karimsky literally gave birth to a new volcanic cone. The volcanic activity doesn't just create spectacular scenery, it creates entire ecosystems. Volcanic ash fertilizes the soil, Hot springs create microclimates that support unique plant communities, and the thermal areas remain snow-free year-round, providing crucial winter habitat for some wildlife. And the climate is just as harsh. 
Because the peninsula sits at the collision zone of multiple air masses, cold Siberian air battles warm Pacific currents, creating some of the most unpredictable weather on the planet. And thus, winters here can be brutal. Temperatures regularly drop to negative 40 degrees Celsius, and in the interior, they've recorded lows of negative 60 degrees Celsius. Snow begins to fall in October and doesn't fully melt until June. That's up to eight months of winter. But the short summers transform Kamchatka into a completely different world. Temperatures can reach 20 degrees along the coast, and the up to 17 hours of sunlight in midsummer triggers an explosion of life. Wildflowers carpet the valleys and the tundra bursts into vibrant greens and purples. And this extreme climate means that the peninsula receives massive amounts of precipitation. Some coastal areas get over 2,500 millimeters annually, mostly as snow. And this creates some of the deepest snowpacks on Earth. In the mountains, snow can accumulate to depths of over 10 meters or more. The weather is dominated by massive storm systems rolling in from the Pacific. These cyclones bring hurricane force winds that can reach up to 200 kilometers an hour, creating blizzard conditions that last for days and can completely reshape the landscape through snow drifts. Water defines Kamchatka's geography just as much as volcanoes do. The peninsula is drained by numerous rivers, but two dominate the landscape, the Kamchatka River and the Avacha River. The Kamchatka River is the peninsula's lifeline, 758 kilometers long, making it one of the longest rivers in far eastern Russia. It flows north through the central valley before turning east to reach the Pacific. And this river system drains nearly a third of the entire peninsula and serves as a crucial salmon highway. And oh, speaking of salmon, Kamchatka's rivers host some of the largest salmon runs on Earth. Six species of Pacific salmon return here annually, with the runs so massive that the rivers literally turn red with fish. Some streams see over 100,000 salmon per kilometer during peak runs. And the volcanic activity on the peninsula has created hundreds of lakes, many sitting in ancient calderas. Lake Kronotskoy is the largest natural lake formed in a volcanic caldera and home to unique endemic species found nowhere else on Earth. In addition, Kamchatka's coastline tells its own geographic story. The western coast facing the Sea of Okhotsk is relatively gentle with wide beaches and shallow bays, but the eastern Pacific coast is dramatically different. Rugged cliffs, deep fjords, and active volcanoes rising directly from the sea. The regional capital sits in the beautiful Avasha Bay, and this natural harbor stays ice-free year-round thanks to thermal activity, making it crucial for transportation and fishing. For most of its history, Kamchatka might as well have been another planet. The peninsula was so remote that even Russian explorers didn't reach it until 1697, and when they did, they found it inhabited by indigenous people, the even Koryak and the Chukchi, who had adopted to this harsh environment over thousands of years. But then came one of the most dramatic chapters in geographic isolation. In 1922, the Soviet Union declared the entire Kamchatka Peninsula a closed military zone, and for 70 years, no outsiders were allowed in. No tourists, no foreign scientists, no journalists. The peninsula was home to a massive military installation, submarine bases, and nuclear facilities. Even today, getting to Kamchatka is an adventure. There are no roads connecting it to the rest of Russia. Every person, every car, Every piece of equipment must arrive by plane or ship. Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky remains one of the largest cities in the world with no road access to anywhere else. Imagine living in a city with close to 200,000 people, completely cut off from the road network of your own country. And the population distribution reflects this isolation. Outside a few coastal settlements, vast areas remain completely uninhabited. You could travel for hundreds of kilometers without seeing a single sign of human presence. Since opening to visitors in 1991, Kamchatka has slowly been connected to the outside world, but infrastructure remains minimal. There are only about 400 kilometers of paved roads on the entire peninsula. Most transportation still happens by helicopter, boat, or tracked vehicles. And thus, for all intents and purposes, Kamchatka acts like an island. And this geographic isolation has created something incredible. One of the Earth's last great wilderness areas. The peninsula is home to the world's largest population of brown bears, estimated at about 20,000 individuals. 
And these aren't just any bears. Kamchatka bears are among the largest in the world, with some males reaching 650 kilograms. The peninsula supports an incredible diversity of ecosystems. Coastal tundra gives way to dense birch and alder forests, which transition to alpine meadows and eventually volcanic deserts. Each zone supports different species adapted to specific conditions. And the waters surrounding Kamchatka are equally rich. The Stellar's sea eagles, the world's heaviest eagles, nest here in large numbers. Orcas, sperm whales, and dozens of other marine mammals feed in the nutrient-rich coastal waters. But my favorite part of this peninsula have to be the volcanoes. And that's because Kamchatka is home to some of the most epic-looking volcanoes on Earth. I previously mentioned Klushevskaya Sopka, one of the most beautiful-looking volcanoes on Earth. And this stratovolcano is not just tall, it's actively growing. Each eruption adds new layers and its height has increased by over 50 meters in recorded history. Then there's Benzimiani, literally meaning the unnamed one, which remained dormant for over 1,000 years before exploding back to life in 1955. Its 1956 eruption was one of the most powerful of the 20th century, completely destroying the volcano's summit and creating a horseshoe crater 1.5 kilometers wide. The blast was so powerful it was heard up to 500 kilometers away. And then there's the Mutnovsky Volcanic Complex. Now this represents a different type of volcano. It isn't just a single peak, but a volcanic field spanning 30 kilometers featuring multiple craters, fumaroles, and hot springs. The largest crater is about 2 kilometers across and 400 meters deep, containing acid lakes that change color based on mineral content and temperature. Nearby, the Taubachuk Volcanic Complex offers a perfect laboratory for studying volcanic processes. It consists of two shield volcanoes connected by a ridge of volcanic cones. Karimiski represents the most active volcano in Kamchatka, erupting almost continuously since 1996. Now this volcano is quite unique, it sits next to a lake, and when underwater eruptions do occur, they create massive steam explosions that can be seen for dozens of kilometers. Now these volcanic giants aren't just scenic wonders, they're active hazards. Kamchatka's volcanoes pose real risk to aviation, as their ash clouds can reach altitudes of 15 kilometers high and travel thousands of kilometers away. Eruptions on this peninsula have forced flight cancellations as far away as Alaska and northern Japan because these ash clouds contain tiny glass particles that can destroy jet engines making Kamchatka's volcanic activity a concern for global aviation. Now the largest city on the peninsula is Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky. It has over 180,000 residents yet it exists in complete geographic isolation from the rest of Russia. To understand just how isolated this city is, it's actually closer to Seattle, Washington than it is to Moscow, Russia, which is the capital of the country it's located in. Yet it remains firmly Russian, separated from the rest of the country by like 600 kilometers of pure wilderness. But the city has a stark beauty. Its geography is defined by its setting, built on the volcanic slopes rising from the Pacific. Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky is surrounded by four active volcanoes that form a dramatic backdrop. Residents wake up each morning to see four massive volcanoes looming over their neighborhoods. And living under the shadow of these active volcanoes isn't just scenic, it's actually very dangerous. In 1991, the city experienced a major ash fall from the Avachinsky volcano that covered the streets in several centimeters of volcanic debris. Residents had to wear masks and cover their cars, and the ash disrupted water supplies and electrical systems for weeks. The city's harbor remains ice-free year-round thanks to geothermal activity, making it one of Russia's most strategic Pacific ports. Submarines regularly dock here, and the city maintains significant military importance despite its isolation. And understandably, everything here costs more, sometimes dramatically more, than in mainland Russia. A simple apple can cost three times what it would in Moscow, because everything must be flown or shipped in. Gasoline also costs more here than in many Western European cities. The urban design is dominated by Soviet-era apartment blocks, giving the city a sprawling rather than vertical character. The volcanic soil and permafrost create unique foundation challenges that influences all types of construction. The city's economy revolves around fishing, the military, and increasingly tourism. 
The isolation that once hindered development now attracts adventure seekers seeking authentic wilderness experiences. And thus, Kamchatka represents something increasingly rare in our connected world, a place where geography still rules supreme. Volcanoes dominate the horizon, wildlife populations remain largely untouched by human influence, and where the Shia remoteness preserves ecosystems that have remained unchanged for millennia. And as human development pressure the world's wild spaces, Kamchatka stands as a reminder of what our planet looked like before we reshaped it. It's a place where you can still witness the raw power of geological forces that built our world and continue to build it today. So the next time someone asks you about the most geographically extreme place on Earth, tell them about Kamchatka. And thanks for joining me on this journey of one of Earth's most remote frontiers. And if you liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you like content like this, remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.